Most people who try to learn coding actually never make it to their first dev job. Why do you think that is? If they are focusing on the wrong things. If you want to go from beginner to getting that first dev job, I'm going to give you a quick and easy roadmap to follow so that you can start your journey on getting that first dev job. Let's get into it. All right, so if you're new, my name is Zazo. I've been coding for over 10 years and I've worked in the tech industry for about eight years. I worked at a Fortune 100 company and I went and did roles from software engineering all the way to things like data analytics and data science. So I have a little bit of experience when it comes to coding and landing a job in the tech industry. So I'm gonna give you the secret sauce to do the same. Let's go. All right, so the first things first, do not get lost in the which language to learn debate, right? Because you're gonna see online, there's a whole bunch of things. You should learn this, you should learn that. This is a better language, this is better for this, blah, 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 blah. If you're just trying to get hired, you want to learn the things that have the highest chance of you getting hired within what you want to do, right? So if you're doing web development, as much as you may hear bad things about JavaScript and React and how it is, all these different things, that is what to learn for web development, right? For data science and AI, you're going to learn Python. That's just a given. For app development, Kotlin, Swift, as easy as that. If you're trying to do something like backend or cloud, it's gonna be Python, Node, or Java, something of that nature. Yes, there are different languages that are popular. Obviously, you always want to check in your area and see what is the most popular for your area. If you're looking for something local, obviously, if you can find fully remote jobs, you know, by all means, you can do that as well. Just know that those tend to have more competition because everybody wants to be fully remote. That's the first thing. Pick one language, stick with that language and do the rest of these steps I'm about to give you with that language and do not switch. Let's get on with it. So the next thing is you want to learn by doing. And now you may be saying, well, I know that. I'm gonna give you these steps and these bullet points, right? To give you exactly what I mean by this and give you kind of like a timeline on what you should be learning at these different stages. I'm gonna be honest with you, tutorials are great. We feel like we're productive, but tutorials aren't getting you hired, all right? I'm gonna be honest, I tried to do it. That ain't the way, G, that ain't the way, all right? So the actual things that will get you hired is you need to build projects. Learn by doing, and when you are on the job, you are not going to be looking at tutorials to build whatever you're building. What I'm gonna recommend you do is the first thing is you want to follow a crash course and you want to spend no longer than two weeks on this crash course tutorials whatever one of those languages i listed above that you have decided to pick and stick with do you a crash course on that language and don't spend any more than two weeks on it obviously if you have other responsibilities then this timeline could vary slightly but you don't want to procrastinate and kind of get in the mindset of well i can just push it out i can just you know i got a lot of things going on don't procrastinate two weeks max right maybe three if you got a lot of stuff going on but two weeks max that you want to spend on the just the crash course we're talking about just so you learn the language the you know syntax all of that different stuff all you want to do is take two weeks on that right the second thing is you're going to want to clone sample or simple apps right a weather app do list basic web pages you want to focus on that for about three weeks to a month right you want to focus on cloning those different things take stuff from github and other people's code you can try to modify it yourself or you can try to create one of these things from scratch however if you want the best results you're going to want to try to do this by yourself you can use google obviously and you can use chat gpt just make sure that when you're using chat gpt you're asked to actually explain the code that it is providing to you really understand and i would recommend coding it out and not copy and pasting the code even if it's the exact same thing that you're writing write out the code get that kind of muscle memory that mind code editor connection all right so really start with writing the code copy and paste will come later down the line once you know what you're doing 
but don't get caught up in copy and pasting. All right, the next thing that's really going to be something that you really need to lock in on, you need to lock in here. You need to build at least one really solid portfolio project. And this is going to take you about one to two months to do, right? So it should be, honestly, this should be some type of full stack application, right? You can do something like a personal finance tracker. What's really good right now is something like AI integrate. So what I recommend is a full stack application between a front end and maybe an AI um, implementation in the back end. And that will kind of show different facets. Now, a full stack application in itself is going to be great. What I will say, there's a caveat to this. Do not just make a full stack application that everybody else has made. Make it personal and tailored to something that you want or something that you know if you have a app or something that you like and you pay for try to replace it and try to build it yourself and make that kind of the topic of conversation in the interview or you know if you get an interview or even in anything else any type of networking make that the conversation right your projects are always going to stand out more when they solve a problem in your specific life reason being is you can actually speak to the pain of why you even made it in the first place. Whereas like if you just do the regular, if I just prescribe you a personal finance app, why are you really gonna do that, right? If you had no real need to do it, you're not gonna be able to speak to it as in depth as something that actually solves a pain point in your life. So all of that is great and all of that is good to show and do on the interview, right? But how do you actually get the interview? That's what I'll be going into next. Lego. Scratch that last interview part. That's not what I'm going into next. So the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get comfortable with some real world tools. What do I mean by this? You need more than just coding knowledge. Honestly, software engineering and any of these tech roles are just Coding is just literally a snippet of what you actually need to learn or know. Like that's now the basics, right? Any position that you go into now, you're required to have knowledge of a computer. They don't even say that anymore. Where previously, like 40 years ago, that was a plus, right? It's the same thing with coding. Coding, the bare minimum is that you know how to code. So make sure you're on point with your code and employers are gonna want devs that know about different tools. So these things go Git and GitHub. So version control is like a must as well. You wanna know how to integrate APIs, talk with APIs, use APIs, APIs, databases, learn how to fetch, store data, you know, make a, let's say CRUD app, learn how to do these, essentially how to do these like little modifications. You wanna get data, you wanna post data, you wanna, you know, patch data, delete data, that type of thing. You're gonna wanna know how to work with APIs and databases and how to do certain actions between the two. That's kind of a must as well. That's kind of like a no brainer. You're gonna wanna know a cloud platform of some type. I believe there are free things that you can do as like, you can go and have like a free account, I believe. I'm not 100% sure on that, but AWS, Azure, Google Cloud are the big ones right now. Once again, find the one that is more popular in your area or popular in general, which is probably going to be AWS most of the time. So learn what's in AWS and all the different things that are available. I'm not saying you have to be an expert on all of them, but do your research, know about AWS. If you can get in there, then get in there and try different things in AWS. It's just going to allow you to speak to the platform better. And this is kind of a given, but some people try to skip this part with using ChatGPT and all these different other AI tools. And that's gonna be debugging and problem solving. Get comfortable with Google, Stack Overflow, and also ChatGPT. The thing is, is that you use ChatGPT a way that's going to be beneficial for you, not just copy and pasting. Have ChatGPT explain to you what's going wrong and how it's solving it, and then implement that as well. Because just because it gives you something to solve your problem doesn't mean it's the best for your code base. So you always want to keep these things in mind. So you want to spend at least two more weeks solidifying these skills that I've just mentioned. But now 
You got all these skills. You've done all this stuff. You got these projects. What do I do now? I told you about all the stuff you can show in your interview, but how do you actually get the interview? That's what I'm gonna go into next. Let's go. All right, so there are a bunch of different ways to kind of maximize your chances of getting an interview, but one of the key ways or one of the better ways, and I know, I know, introverts, we don't wanna network, but networking is going to give you such an advantage of actually getting in the room with these hiring managers because you're going to want to know somebody that's already in the company one because they know who you can reach out to they can reach out they can give a referral whatever but you might also want to know what is this culture like do i actually want to work at this job there's been plenty of instances like this including myself where you go into a role or go onto a team and it just ain't it it ain't it and if you would have been able to network with some people that are already currently working on that team or in that area and can speak to that you can kind of point your direction on where you want to go that's going to be better for your success right so you want to network so optimize your github right and your linkedin employees employers can come by and swoop by your linkedin at any point in time posting your projects and sharing your learning journey however you decide to do that do that like i said github or linkedin make sure to include these on your resume as well your github profile and your linkedin now like i said you're gonna want to network like crazy get to know other devs however that is if you currently have a job but you're not necessarily in that software engineering area find somebody that is and that works there and go and talk to them just go talk to them ask them questions pick their brain how they get their role and just sit there and talk to them listen and absorb those nuggets of wisdom that they have you can also do hackathons these are a great way to actually get some experience as well as get some actual knowledge and network with others and then also there's online communities everywhere that you can join and just absorb that knowledge be engaged with the community really try to learn and soak up and you know absorb all these different devs mindsets and what they are essentially doing or the content that they're putting out really try to absorb as much of that as you can and go on linkedin easy apply easy apply easy apply you do you do not want to do this you do not want to do this you do not want to spam hundreds of resumes just blindly with the same resume all this you do not want to do it just don't do it all right what you want to do is you want to target your roles specifically where your skills match up and customize your application to that for example if you are a web dev like that's what you want to do web development right and your skill or the language that you picked is javascript do not just go on linkedin and be like ah this is kind of they say you need to know javascript but it's mainly an ai position let me just apply for it anyways do not do that right you learned one language a specific skill and by this time after you follow the other steps you should be fairly good at it what you want to do is strategically use your resume and be very specific about what skills you have with that language and apply to jobs that are mainly that language not saying you can't have other stuff on there but really tailor it to the job that you are applying for do not just blanket one resume to a bunch of different companies and spam you're going to need to change up things for the job posting because every posting is different and needs different types of requirements and qualifications. So make sure that you are tailoring your resume to whatever job you are actually applying for and that your skills match up with. And if you can try to get a hold of the hiring manager and that networking part I talked about, that's gonna help you as well. Try to get a hold of somebody individually, whether that be the hiring manager or someone that works under them or anything like that, and try to get in that way to get the hiring manager to see your actual resume instead of just shooting it to LinkedIn or one of these job sites and just having it filtered out by AI and all that kind of 
kind of stuff. All right, now the next thing is something that you're gonna wanna do. I didn't mention it in the previous ones because those are more important. However, you're going to want to be ready for your coding interviews. So you're going to want to go, and I know, I know, and you're gonna wanna go grind out some leak code while you're applying for these jobs, right? You might, for the first one or two weeks, you might wanna be just getting some leak code in there. You don't wanna forget about your real projects as, as well. You can you can do either one, but you're going to need to know leak code of some of some degree because chances are your interview is going to have a technical aspect to it and you might see some leak code problems there. So and I wouldn't say necessarily that building real projects and leak code are similar like you just because you build real projects, which is what you'll be doing on the job doesn't mean that they're not going to ask you leak code questions. So make sure that you are prioritizing and know, you know, both of them essentially. So you got to do some leak code, got to do some leak code problems. Chances are that technical interview, they're going to have some form of leak code problems. This is the first software engineering job. I'm going to say focus on easy and medium questions. Um, just make sure that easies are easy to you. Um, there are some hard ones, but just get comfortable with that and even if you can't solve them make sure that you are even able to speak to them if you're on the interview speaking what you're thinking on the interview is going to be a lot better too so just prepare for that there's nothing wrong with kind of like going through your thoughts with whoever's interviewing you and kind of doing that talking back and forth while you're doing your problem it just shows that you're thinking and how you're thinking as well and you could possibly still get the role depending on that itself. You don't wanna just sit there in silence and then try to figure out, can't figure out and don't explain anything of what you're thinking or how you're thinking about going about the problem because that figuring out the problem situation can still go a long way. Even though you may not know how to do it, you know, coding wise, the employer will still see that you're able to talk through how you would like to solve the problem even if you can't translate that over into code. So don't just sit there and just be mute while you're trying to do the code and stuff. But this is gonna be the end of the video. That's the fastest way that you can kind of go from no coding knowledge to getting your first job. If you follow these steps, you will be on a good road pretty much to getting that first job. So love, peace, and chicken grease. Leave me a comment down below, like the video, and get that first job. Love, peace, and chicken grease.